Lesson 3 is about Lewis diagrams for ionic compounds. The objective for today is to construct Lewis dot diagrams for ionic compounds. So remember Lewis dot diagrams indicate the electrons um, that are you know contained in that atom. So the steps are to draw an ion dot diagram next to each other making sure that the ion charge add up to zero. So here we have an example of magnesium chloride. The formula for magnesium chloride is MgCl2. Remember that when we have a negative or anion, we put a charge, negative charge, and we have all the dots showing to indicate it has eight, a full octet. And if we have a cation, a positive charge, we don't put the dots, and we just put the, the plus and the charge um, indicating what charge it has. So here we have a negative one, another negative one, so we're at negative two, that means we've got to have a positive 2 to balance it out. These charges should all add up to 0. So dot diagrams for positive ions, or in our case we're talking about metals here. We have our, our element uh, symbol, and with a plus sign, with brackets around it. And for negative ions, the nonmetals, we have our element symbol with our 8 dots, brackets, and a negative charge. So here's an example, a dot diagram for NaCl. So here we have uh, sodium we know is in the first column, so it has one valence electron. And chlorine is in the seventh column, or 7a column, 17th column. Therefore, it has seven dots. And we kind of go through and put our, assign our dots where the electron should be. We can then see that, well, chlorine wants one. Sodium wants to give up one. So that electron is going to form that full octet for chlorine. When that happens, that means we have lost an electron for sodium. So we're going to write sodium as an ion with a bracket and a plus. We're going to write chlorine with a bracket and a negative, meaning it's gained an electron. So there's your dot diagram for sodium chloride. Here's one for calcium chloride. So our formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. Again, if we look at the, the way that it's drawn out here, we have calcium, second column, two dots, chlorine again, two different chlorine atoms according to our formula. When we do this, we know that the first chlorine here, negative, um, the other chlorine here again negative, and then we have our calcium in the middle here. So we know that an ionic bond is formed by the electron ex electrostatic attraction. If we count up our charges, we have a negative and a negative, that's two negatives, so we got to have a two next to the positive here to indicate that um, it's balanced to zero. Let's move on to the, to the next thing. Those are all the electronegativity values if you look them up. So again, example here for barium sulfide. So barium has a plus two charge, okay, when it forms an ion. Sulfur has a minus two charge when it forms an ion. Plus two minus two equals zero. If we were to do our dot diagram, we have barium here with our with our two dots indicating the two electrons. We have sulfur again with um, six dots because it's again in the sixth column. This dot's going to form, uh, a com or both these dots are going to move or transfer over to form that complete um, octet for barium sulfide. Aluminum oxide. So aluminum forms a plus three charge. Oxide forms a negative two charge. Okay, so when we do that again we have to show the dots to show indicate that it's a, a negative, right? Um, we have to also remember the common factor between these um, with, a, with, with 2 and 3 is 6. So we got to somehow get our charges to balance out to be 6. So if we have a negative 2, a negative 2, and a negative 2, that's all be becomes negative 6. Plus 3 and plus 3, that becomes a positive 6. Plus, plus 6, negative 6 cancels out. And so there we can kind of see what that looks like in that regard. If we were to draw this out... Um, as a dot diagram, to me it makes a little more sense in my mind when I when I look at it. I have aluminum with my three uh, dots, and then I have another aluminum with my three dots. I wrote down three oxygen atoms in order to get my charges to balance out, so I'm going to put my three oxygen atoms down here with their respective six dots because it's again in the six column, um, or six A column on the periodic table. I can then kind of draw these lines and, and, and visualize what's going to happen. These two electrons from this aluminum are going to form a complete octet. 
this electron and this electron are going to form a complete octet and these two electrons are going to move over to form a complete octet. Therefore we now have a stable um, compound of aluminum oxide which has a formula of Al2O3 and this is why. Let's check for your understanding. Can you construct Lewis dot diagrams for ionic compounds? At the end of this lesson, you should be able to construct Lewis dot diagrams for ionic compounds.